Hi everyone, this is Abhinav Joshi. I'm the Product Marketing Lead for AIML on OpenShift at Red Hat. And today, what we'll be talking about is how you can harness the power of AIML with the Red Hat portfolio of technologies and integrated solutions. And uh, feel free to interrupt me if you have any questions. And what we'll do is, this is more of a strategic discussion, so we won't be going deep technical in this talk today. Uh, but if you have any deep technical questions, just keep them with you and we'll be happy to address them as much as we can today. If not, we would definitely like to do a follow-up where we can go deeper into the technical details of our uh, solution and that's where we can like address all the deep technical questions. So before we go into the meat of the discussion here, just wanted to kind of come up with a, the summary. Uh, so what we are seeing is that like the AI ML powered intelligent software applications are driving, are helping our customers to be able to achieve the key business goals and objectives, right? And we are seeing that the AI ML is helping the customers like, achieve their business objectives across all kinds of industry verticals. But at the same time, we see that there are a lot of execution challenges. And this has to deal with not just the various tools and technologies that you have to put together, but also related to the people and process transformation that you have to do for these uh, enable to make AI ML real. And if you are not able to execute these people process and technology changes, what we've seen is that a lot of the projects are stalling. Uh, and this is same as like with the digital transformation, um, cloud native application development as well, where if you don't focus on people and process transformation in addition to technology, um, it can result in a negative impact um, in terms of the investments that you made. And then finally, the good news is that Red Hat can help. So we have the capabilities to help you speed up your AI ML initiatives, and this will allow you to um, have the faster delivery of intelligent software applications that will help you differentiate in the market and make your customers happy. So this is the agenda for today. Um, so first we'll talk about the potential and the challenges with AI ML. And then after that, we'll talk about uh, why containers and Kubernetes for AI ML. As you may know, containers and Kubernetes are providing a great value to speed up the software development projects. So the same value is applicable for the AI ML projects as well. So we'll briefly talk about why containers and Kubernetes, and then we'll jump into why Red Hat and talk about our portfolio and also talk about some of the success stories that we've had in this space. And, and then at the end, we'll kind of talk about the next steps uh, on where we go from here in terms of the next level of discussion to help make AI ML real for your environment. Now let's first talk about the potential of AI ML. And we always like to start with this slide uh, to do a level set on these different terms and technology. You may have heard of AI, ML, DL, and on and on. So at the very basic level, the word artificial intelligence is mainly used by the business community to kind of talk about how machines can imitate intelligent in human behavior, being able to um, have the intelligence so that the machines can make the predictions on behalf of the human and help you with the business decisions. And then the words like machine learning are mainly used by the technical community. And um, the, main, uh, it's, the main idea is giving the computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed uh, to do so. And then like deep learning is a subset of the machine learning where uh, what you do is to use, use the layers to progressively extract the value from the high level uh, the high level features from the raw inputs and some of the use cases for deep learning include computer vision image recognition video recognition and so on so is that how you guys see like ai ml and dl as well okay so in terms of the key goals and objectives now why would you uh, make a lot of investment in your ai ml projects so uh, in partnering with Red Hat, these are the key things we can help you achieve uh, by implementing your AI ML initiatives. It can help you serve your customers better and, and you can get be more competitive, help you gain like AI ML, can help you be more competitive. It can help you increase your revenue 
and then it can also help you reduce the cost. So my question to you is like, are you seeing it the same way as well as to the value that AIML can bring you to the table? So at this point, uh, I'd like to open it up and see if we see anything missing in here um, in terms of the key top level goals and objectives that you're trying to achieve with AIML. Okay, now moving on to the next level down in terms of the key business goals and objectives, because for being able to increase your revenue, to save costs, to serve your customers better and so on, you have to work on specific like initiatives in your line of businesses. So what you see on the slide here are some of the top initiatives that we are seeing across different industry verticals where AIML is becoming a key part um, of the program. Like if I talk about healthcare, uh, being able to diagnose um, a disease, something very quickly before it uh, like negatively impacts the patient is very key. And we are, we are starting to see that a lot of customers, our Red Hat customers are starting to do um, use AIML for being able, for speeding up the diagnostics and cure for the patients and also to improve the clinical efficiencies. And if you talk about financial services, what we are seeing is uh, customers are implementing AIML to help with fraud detection, be able to give out targeted offers, uh, uh, be able to make the predictions as to who's going to default on the payments, and also finding the customers that they should be increasing the credit limits so that the customers can spend more money on their credit card and the bank can uh, get some value out of it in terms of more commissions and more revenue and so on. And then if you look at automotive, there is a lot of buzz on uh, autonomous driving. It's becoming a big thing as well. And then uh, like predictive maintenance, quality control, and so on. So across all the industry verticals, we are seeing a lot of traction. So uh, what are you guys seeing in terms of the, pro the top projects that you have right now where you are looking to benefit from the AIML in your key business projects? So at this point, I'd like to open it up for discussion. Uh, so that you can have a good idea on your top level, uh, the key initiatives that you have in your different line of businesses where you want to implement AIML. Now what we are seeing is, uh, and the, the data that you see here is all coming from customer research and the research from the third party analysts. What we are seeing is that um, our like enterprises uh, and even like on the government side, uh, all our customers are uh, in investing in the platform for AIML. Uh, why now as compared to before? Like AIML has been there since 1956, but now with the abundance of data, like data doubles every 18 months, and then the computing, the dense computing power that is available to us, and then the rise of uh, the open source, the machine learning tool chain. So all this um, is helping make AIML real. And uh, what you see here, um, the $13 trillion. So this, is a, this was a study done by McKinsey um, in uh, 2018. So what they came up with based on the study they had was that, uh, that, that AIML has the potential to deliver uh, 13 trillions into global economy um, activity by 2030. So basically like AIML can help the businesses be more successful and generate more revenue. Then the figure that you see on the right-hand side, uh, what we've also heard uh, through the, our friends at 451 Research is that 48% uh, of the, like over a thousand customers that they interviewed, uh, so 48% of those said that, that their current AI infrastructure will not be able to meet the demands of their, uh, will not be able to meet the demands of their AI projects. So, so the reason that we are sh sharing these numbers is that AIML is real and you have to like holistically think about your solution, your solution stack, not just at the, the AIML tool chain layer, but also at the cloud platform and the infrastructure layers as well to be successful with AIML. Um, and then that 451 research that I briefly mentioned about, and we kind of cite the source at the bottom of the slide, uh, it also reported that um, that you have to like holistically think about the infrastructure um, uh, in terms of making like AIML real. So this could be like data preparation and management, the initial phase, then the, the AIML model training, 
and then like ultimately once your model is built out you have to put the model into production and start doing the inferencing so what you see here is um, the customers are reporting that that all these phases are compute intensive and that depends on the use cases as well so you have to think about your infrastructure platform in a very holistic way uh, when you are thinking about like executing on ai ml projects now so are you guys thinking the same way as well like in terms of the the solution architecture that you need to put together for the different phases of ai ml projects Now let's briefly talk about the AI ML lifecycle and the key persona involved. And a lot of you may be familiar with this, but our goal to have this uh, discussion is so that we all can be on the same page on what the, the AI ML lifecycle is and what are the different persona that are involved in the AI ML lifecycle. So what you see here is you start with setting the goals that, hey, what are the goals of my AI ML projects? Once you've set the goals, the next step is to gather and prepare the data so that way, uh, like you have a lots of data for your, uh, uh, to be able to build out the machine learning algorithms that can help you make the correct predictions when those algorithms are most commonly known as the models get deployed into production. So once you have the gather and prepare data, the next step is to be able to develop the machine learning models. And this is where you uh, select a, a few you shortlist a few machine learning models, and then you um, so train those models, you test those models, and then from all of those, you kind of shortlist one or two that you want to get deployed into production. And that's where the next step comes in, being able to deploy the machine learning models into the app dev processes. And then after that is being able to implement um, like your the intelligent application that is powered by the AI models, uh, into production and start the inferencing phase where your model is going to help make the prediction based on the new data it sees um, um, frequently. And then like ultimately what you have to do is continuously monitor and manage your model because as the model starts to see the new data, you may run into uh, issues where the model is making wrong predictions because it may not have seen that kind of data before. Um, and then so you see a loop on the top where you have to continuously retrain the model based on the new data that it uh, is going to experience in production to make the model, to keep the model fresh uh, and continue to make the best predictions possible. So this is how we see the, uh, our customers are thinking about the AI ML life cycle. Uh, do you guys see any similarities or differences on how you guys are seeing the AI ML uh, life cycle in your environment. Okay, now let's talk about the key personas that are responsible for the different phases that you saw here in the life cycle. Um, like any other project, the key goals, business goals are set by the business leadership uh, at the topmost level. And then being able to gather and prepare the data um, there is a persona called data engineer and you guys may have those as well. So this is what we are seeing. Data personas, are, uh, data engineer are responsible for gathering and preparing the data. And then after that comes the role of data scientists. So they are mainly responsible for being able to develop the machine learning model and work with the software developers to deploy these models into the application development or the DevOps processes. And that's where you see the role of an app developer or a software engineer, um, if you will, where um, software developers role is to work very closely with data scientists, get those models, and then be able to build those applications, the, the AI powered intelligent applications, and get those deployed into production. And then they have to work hand in hand with the data scientists in the monitoring and the management phase, because data scientists have to know how the model is behaving in production. And then what part of the models uh, has to be retrained. So all that uh, data scientists have to be closely involved. And then um, IT operations, uh, the goal is to be involved throughout the life cycle uh, because for IT operations, all the personas that you see here uh, are the customers because they have to make sure that the data engineers, data scientists, app developers are getting the best experience possible. And we are also seeing the rise of uh, a persona called machine learning engineer 
think of that as a, like as a hybrid between a data scientist and app developer, uh, but more focused on uh, getting those models de uh, deployed in production by working very closely with the software developers because the data scientist may be very busy with building the next set of models um, and then maybe deep in the weeds and may not necessarily have the time to work on a daily basis with app developers. So that's where we are seeing that machine learning engineer persona come up a lot. So my question to you is uh, in terms of different personas, uh, like how closely or how different are you thinking in terms of the different personas that will play a key role in your AIM and life cycle? Okay, now that we talked about about the uh, different personas and the life cycle, a key thing we have to um, get on the same page is uh, the conceptual architecture. That if you have to execute on the AI ML projects, there are um, various software and infrastructure pieces that you need in your machine learning architecture. And at the topmost level, what you see is like the, the tooling and the framework for your machine learning, deep learning for gathering and preparing data and for DevOps to get these models deployed into production as well. So that's where we see tools like TensorFlow, Jupyter Notebooks, Python, Selden, could be Tekton or Jenkins, say for DevOps um, and so on, right? And below that, you see the, the data sources, like you need your data services as well uh, to be able to host the data uh, throughout this whole machine learning uh, life cycle. So that's where we see things like your traditional, uh, could be a SQL database or the NoSQL, new SQL databases, data lakes, object storage, and so on. And then below that is, you have to be able to run all these machine learning and DevOps tool chain, um, and even the data sources, be able to connect those uh, in a uniform way with a hybrid multi-cloud platform um, with self-service capabilities. And what we see is we see is these self-service capabilities in the in the hybrid multi-cloud platform are very important. So that way, like all the personas that we talked about on the previous slide, as in the data engineer, the data scientist, your application developer, um, have the freedom, get the self-service capabilities to be able to do their job without having to depend on IT on a daily basis to provision the infrastructure. Because a lot of these tasks are very repetitive and they can be compute intensive as well. So they don't want to depend on, on the IT operations team on an hourly or a, uh, a few times a day or on a daily basis uh, to make new provisioning requests. And that's where the next key thing in the layer is, if you go down, is compute acceleration. Like a lot of these machine learning model development, as well as for certain cases, um, like the image detection or video inferencing, um, in production can be very compute intensive and you need the insights at a very fast pace. So, uh, so your uh, like hybrid multi-cloud platform with self-service capabilities, it needs to be able to seamlessly like integrate with the, the infrastructure layers and provide the necessary compute acceleration. And that's where we see things like, like NVIDIA GPUs, uh, FPGAs and CPUs. And then at the bottom of the layer, you see that like all these things that we talked about um, should be able to uh, consistently run across your different infrastructure footprint, be it uh, physical servers, bare metal servers, be virtual, private cloud in your data center, or even at a hosted facility, be it in the public clouds, or be like a hybrid combination of private and public, or be at the edge. So your data scientists, data engineers, app developers, should get a consistent experience regardless of where they build the model and where they build the software application and where they deploy the solution. So that way they don't have to reinvent the wheel when they move from one stage of this project onto the another. Now my question to you is, uh, does this make sense? What do you see um, kind of missing here at a high level? Or what do you think that um, could be changed here to align with how you guys are thinking um, in terms of your conceptual machine learning architecture that you want to operationalize in your environment. And your input is gonna be extremely valuable 
as we move on to the next phase of the discovery journey to work with your technical teams um, and come back with our Red Hat solution proposal to help you make AI ML real for your environment. Okay, so now we've talked about the uh, life cycle, the personas and the architecture that you have to put in place, but all this is not straightforward as you may have realized in all your projects. There are always execution challenges that you have to solve for so that you can uh, make AI ML real and, and help achieve your business goals and objectives that uh, led to the, uh, uh, that have led to your investments on the AI ML space. So some of the key challenges that we see customers are facing, the first one is talent shortage. Um, it's really hard to find talent these days and especially the data scientists. There are very few out there. So we see that talent shortage uh, is a big challenge. The next one is data acquisition and preparation. They, uh, and one of the challenges is that it's hard to find a readily usable data that can be taken and then be directly fed to the data scientist. So we see that the customers still have to spend time uh, to collect uh, and prepare the data uh, before it can be fed to the data scientist. The next key thing is lack of collaboration across teams. Um, as you saw on the one of the previous slides, there are a lot of different personas involved and uh, to make AI ML real um, at a fast pace, uh, all these people have to collaborate in a very uh, tight and a, like a well-oiled machine because lack of collaboration um, can slow things down and it can stall your AI ML projects or even the delivery of the AI ML powered intelligent applications. So collaboration is lack of collaboration we are seeing as a challenge as well. Yeah, and then finally, uh, like having to wait on IT admin teams or the IT operations to be able to to execute on the data science workflows on app dev projects or for data engineers to use their uh, data preparation tool chain and be able to prepare the data, right? Uh, and then uh, lack of like having to wait on infrastructure resources. And the second key thing is um, like having to put together their the AI ML software tool chain and be able to uh, repeat their experiments in a consistent way uh, and be able to share their experiments with each other and even with the outcome of the data science experiments with the app dev teams uh, in a consistent way and making sure that the results that they get are consistent. So we are seeing that not being able to, uh, to achieve the consistency uh, is also a, a big challenge. And uh, the good news is that we can help solve a lot of these challenges. Right? And that's what we'll, we'll talk about in the next few slides. Now, my question to you is, uh, does this like align with the key challenges that you are seeing in your environment? And um, like, how are you thinking about it? Like, do you see anything here, missing in here? Or if some of these are more important or more critical for you right now as compared to others? So this would be a good time to uh, have that discussion. Okay, now that we've, talk, we've talked about the challenges, uh, a key thing that we want to start of the next uh, topic is to talk about the value of containers and Kubernetes. And this is where we're seeing a lot of our customers and even industry in general is building their AI ML projects on top of uh, containers and Kubernetes because these technologies are helping the customers make AI ML real. So they are helping you accelerate your AI ML projects. And these are the key values that containers and Kubernetes can bring to the table to help you accelerate your delivery of AI powered intelligent software applications. And the value that containers and Kubernetes have brought to, uh, to the software development world are also directly applicable to your, uh, the machine learning model development projects as well. Um, like the value proposition like around being able to go faster, uh, portability, um, like you do, do it once and then you uh, ship it like across all your sites uh, to achieve the consistency, um, having the flexibility to, to provision the, the environments needed to 
uh, for your AI ML projects on an as needed basis, um, as and when you need is key as well. And then being able to scale up and down your like AI ML modeling task um, is uh, can can be achieved with the use of containers and Kubernetes based hybrid cloud platform. So, I, so we are seeing a lot of customers across different industry verticals uh, get the benefits of containers and Kubernetes. And why this is important is because at the end of the day, what do the data scientists care about, right? So what we are seeing is uh, the data scientists care less about the infrastructure uh, platform uh, as well as like how you are helping them go faster. All they care about is they need a, a self-service portal from where they can access the machine learning tool chain and also access the data sources that uh, the data engineers have made ready for them. And then they want to go in this, in these um, the machine learning tool chain and be able to perform the machine learning modeling uh, and uh, tasks. And then they want to work closely with the software developers and get these machine learning models deployed in production. And then they want a way to be able to inference, uh, to monitor the inferencing tasks. Um, and then, uh, so their expectation is that all these tasks that should seamlessly integrate with the compute hardware acceleration, as well as with the infrastructure resources like compute, network, storage, and so on. So, so all they care about is getting a very seamless experience with their machine learning tool chain and access to data. So that way they can focus on the machine learning modeling and getting these models deployed into production as compared to worrying about the infrastructure platform and um, uh, like having to work with, with IT teams uh, on an hourly basis uh, to fulfill the provisioning request. Because if they have to spend more time on that, that means that uh, the AI ML projects are, are slowing down and the business is going to suffer because their competition uh, is going to be able to uh, bring the new features to market at a very fast pace as compared to you. Now, like how does this like, align with how like, you are thinking in terms of the needs of your data scientists and, and them like, having to depend on the different teams, especially the IT infrastructure um, on the resource requests. Now let's talk about why Red Hat and how Red Hat can help in this space. Uh, now what we are seeing is, so, and all this is based on the deployments we've had uh, in our customer um, in terms of the AI ML projects that, that we are helping the customers on, uh, as well as the capabilities we have in our portfolio. Uh, so what we can do is help you accelerate these AI ML projects. We've learned from a lot of the, the early deployments that we have seen out there. So we've learned a lot and I'll talk about those examples uh, in one of the next few slides. So we are continuously learning and making the customers uh, successful by operationalize, helping them operationalize containers and Kubernetes based like hybrid cloud platform uh, to host your, your AI ML software tool chain um, on top of that. The next key thing is we have comprehensive portfolio beyond just the containers and Kubernetes platform. And our, our comprehensive portfolio can help you meet the needs of the entire uh, stack that we talked about a few minutes back, helps you complete the AI ML architecture. And then uh, we have uh, several key partnerships, right, at the strategic level. Um, so that way it makes your experience very seamless um, on deploying and lifecycle managing the AI ML tool chain on, on top of Red Hat OpenShift and a broader portfolio as well. And then finally, uh, the, the Red Hat is built on open source tool chain, right? And we continuously work in the open source community and are seen as a leader and a trusted provider for the, uh, the, uh, the open source uh, space. So everything we do is open source. So that way tomorrow, if you decide to manage things on your own, so you don't have unlocking, right? You don't have a lock-in and you can feel free to manage your environment yourself because it's all open source uh, software. And also like open source is helping drive a lot of innovation as well. And not just the cost savings because I don't have to buy the licenses. I just have to pay for the subscription. But because of open source, uh, the rate of innovation has gone up considerably. So these are the key values that we bring to the table. Now being um, specific, right? Um, we have a lot of 
customers that we've made uh, successful, uh, like HCA Healthcare, they're able to diagnose um, like a disease called sepsis at a faster pace. And this is giving the physicians an advantage in terms of starting a treatment plan for the customer. And like a lot of the financial institutions um, are leveraging our portfolio to help with uh, getting the fraud detection in place um, so that um, the, they can be a trusted uh, financial institution for their customers. And then going to like oil and gas, like Exxon Mobil, uh, they've been able to democratize data science and be able to make the, the oil and gas exploration uh, very efficient. And then like Ministry of Defense, Israel, um, they have a use case to help their researchers grow faster. So that way it can help them with uh, speed up the mission, the, the key mission goals and objectives that they have, be able to achieve these at a very fast pace. And we have a lot more examples across different industry verticals. So we thought I'll bring up a few of these to kind of show that we have credibility in the space and we are helping the customers across different industry verticals make AI ML real. Yeah, speaking of HCA Healthcare, I mentioned a few years, uh, a few minutes back, um, it's providing the the clinicians a, a five year, a five hour head start in terms of treating sepsis, uh, and this is helping save a lot of lives as well because now they're able to go faster and save lives, and nothing can be more important than saving lives, and especially these days in these tough times where saving lives is the most important thing that like everybody is focused on. Uh, BMW, I talked about this as well. They have uh, something called connected car, right? Where um, the users can call the concierge service right from the car to get uh, like help uh, as well on the car or find a local resource like as to where you are driving or even if you run into an accident or something so they can um, get touch of the customer ex uh, the customer support at a very fast pace and the red hat uh, solutions are playing a key role in in having bmw deliver this uh, connected drive capability um, and now we saw this slide a few minutes back where we talked about the different uh, uh, layers in the stack what you see in here is that uh, the Red Hat portfolio, um, it can help you up and down the stack to make AI ML real. Um, we start with the middle where we, we show like Red Hat OpenShift Kubernetes platform as being that hybrid and multi-client cloud platform with self-service capabilities um, to help you make AI ML real. And then we have capabilities in our middleway portfolio that can help you with um, the machine learning and the DevOps tool chain to meet like in, in needs of those. And then we have uh, data services like data grid, like again, part of the middleware portfolio to help you um, with the data services. And then we have the infrastructure portfolio at the bottom, right? Starts with like um, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Uh, we have storage offerings in Red Hat Container, OpenShift Container Storage. Ceph storage for data lake and then OpenStack and virtualization platform as well. So as you see here, we have capabilities up and down the stack to help make AI ML real for you. Uh, now, speaking of OpenShift, right? So it's, it's kind of base of our solution where uh, uh, it provides all the capabilities. It's the most mature like enterprise Kubernetes platform out there. Uh, it provides all the benefits that we talked about, uh, like around wide containers and Kubernetes on AIML. In addition to those benefits, um, we also provide a lot more because there are several Kubernetes distributions out there um, and you may get confused as to which one is more real and which one is not so real. So we are continuously working with a lot of our different ISVs in the AIML uh, space to, to do deep integration. So that way it helps you simplify the deployment and lifecycle management of these like AI ML tool chain. Um, so, so this is a key differentiator for us. And then the second key thing is that um, portability um, because we work with all the, all the major cloud providers like be it like IBM Cloud, Google Cloud, uh, Microsoft Azure, um, like Amazon and so on. 
and then you have the flexibility to deploy and lifecycle manage uh, your machine learning tool chain as well as the the ai powered intelligent application like across on premises data center or in the cloud in a very consistent way and that consistent experience is provided by openshift uh, serving as the common um, like hybrid cloud platform on top of all the infrastructure underlays and then on openshift we also have the self managed and the cloud hosted option so that way if you decide that you don't want to be responsible for the day to day management of infrastructure so you can go with one of our cloud hosted options that we have on the various cloud providers next key thing is the collaboration so because of the integrated devops tool chain that we have with openshift uh, it can help you not just to build a containerized like ai ml tool chain but also like allows you to your data scientists to work very collaboratively with your application developers your data engineers your it operations and so on to collaboratively uh, deploy these machine learning models into production through the uh, the ai powered intelligent applications that your software developers are mainly focused on and what this helps you to do is it helps you extend your devops tool chain for the entire machine learning life cycle so that way you are able to bring in a lot of automation uh, into your machine learning projects and also speed up the delivery of the uh, of the machine learning models and the ai powered intelligent applications and then finally we can't harp on this like enough uh, we continue to work on different projects like what you see here is um, like the k native for the serverless functions bringing that capability to openshift we have the istio service mesh uh, prometheus for the monitoring um uh, ceph uh, say for storage um and then the core os that's the rel core os it serves as the uh, the container host uh, the immutable container host so what we're doing is uh, taking all these different projects on top of kubernetes and be able to do the integration so that way you get all the key capabilities that you need and you don't have to manually combine the various parts and pieces to be have uh, to be able to have um, like an enterprise class kubernetes platform now our middleware portfolio it provides a lot of capabilities in the machine learning tool chain as well where we have uh, things like uh, the fuse like amq streams uh, and then kafka uh, that can um, that can like help you with the data ingestion um, like the event driven architecture it's got the free scale api management data grid and 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 on and on um, and then we also have um, things like uh, um, process automation manager decision manager that can help you accelerate the deployment of machine learning models into production bottom line is we have a broad middleware portfolio that can make it easy for you to operationalize your machine learning models and also help you with the the full pipeline um, in terms of the model serving once you have operationalized the model and then the next thing is in terms of the software defined cloud infrastructure so that's where we have um, like openstack and it had openstack platform um, we have a lot of customers uh, uh, that are using this as their infrastructure as a service and openshift and the rest of the portfolio can ride directly on top of openstack where openstack can serve as the infrastructure as a service platform with the gpu integration um, and then so you can ride um, um openshift directly on top of that so that way you have the flexibility to get both containers and virtual machines as well if need be for your ai ml projects and same is true for the red hat virtualization as well where uh, we have some customers that are using openshift on top of rev as the virtual infrastructure platform and rev also has integrations with um with like nvidia gpus uh, so that way um you are able to speed up your your ai ml projects and especially the compute acceleration and if you're deploying openshift on top of um, bare metal servers as well so that's where we have integrations with nvidia gpus as well so that way you get those uh, that gpu acceleration to speed up your machine learning modeling and the inferencing task in a very seamless way for your data scientists your app developers yeah and then on the storage side Right, so you're uh, so for hosting all these uh, containers 
or the containerized machine learning and your app dev tool chain. Um, so you need storage as well. So we have OpenShift container storage that plugs very seamlessly into OpenShift. And through the integrations we have done, it becomes very easy for you to deploy and lifecycle ma manage your storage for your OpenShift projects. And um, it also helps you um, scale seamlessly uh, as your data needs grow and you need to be able to scale your data um, as fast as your business. So what we are also doing is we are continuing to work in the open source community as well. And Red Hat is a big proponent of the open source community where we are working with projects like TensorFlow, Spark, Jupyter, PyTorch, Kubeflow, working with NVIDIA as well on open source projects, be able to take all these different projects uh, and then work on some downstream projects as well, where you may have heard of like Open Data Hub. Uh, think of it as a reference architecture, like a, a complete machine learning as a service platform that's built, that's built on OpenShift, Ceph storage, and some um, the, the middleware and the open source community projects as well. Like, like Apache Spark, uh, TensorFlow, um, uh, Jupyter Notebooks, and so on, uh, to be able to give you a complete uh, platform to do your machine learning based on open source projects, right? And it's a community project. So some of the parts of the project are supported by Red Hat, and some of them are based on the upstream open source community. So, and we'd be happy to talk about more on Open Data Hub. Uh, in the follow-on uh, projects or in the follow-on meetings that you may have. Uh, now, partnerships are very important to us, the strategic partnerships in the AI ML space, because uh, your data scientists, your app developers, and data engineers, so they, they mostly care about that uh, tool chain that they need to be able to do their job. And anything we can do to help make their experience very easy is very important to us. So that's where we're working with a number of different leaders on the, the AI ML tool chain up and down the stack uh, to help you make it very easy to deploy the tool chain and do and life cycle manage that as well. Um, so that's where you see like with IBM, Cloud Pack for data on top of OpenShift, it's already supported and that's where uh, it brings in a lot of value uh, to the table. And then we continue to work with vendors like H2O.AI, Cognitive Scale, Selden, uh, Dot Science, uh, and then the database vendors as well, uh, and on and on. SAS as well, we are working with all these key players uh, to make sure that your data scientists and app developers, data engineers, find it very easy to uh, use like OpenShift to be able to deploy and lifecycle manage the AI, ML, and app dev tool chain in a very easy way. So that takes a lot of the infrastructure barriers out of the equation so that they can focus on their machine learning modeling tasks as compared to spending time on fixing the infrastructure issues. And here are some of the quotes from the key leaders at the different companies we work with, um, like NVIDIA, SAS, and then our own IBM, where we are very tightly integrated um, on the cloud packs that IBM has brought to market. Now, to, so we talked a lot uh, to summarize, as you see that, that we talked about that the, the different organizations are operationalizing AIML projects to help the businesses go faster and be able to achieve the key business objectives, uh, be it being more competitive, um, customer satisfaction, increasing the revenue, saving costs, or being more secure, right? The business benefits, the AI ML are playing a key role, but it comes with challenges as well across people, process, and technology transformation, like you see in like any app dev project. So those challenges are applicable for your AI ML projects as well. And we are confident based on the experience we have and the broad portfolio, um, our open source leadership, and the strong ecosystem that we are building on AI ML space both on the software side as well as on the infrastructure side to help you accelerate um, your machine learning projects and, and help you with the faster delivery of AI-powered intelligent software applications. And with that, 
uh, I want to get on to the next step. So that's where what we would like to do is um, uh, get your sponsorship to have this discussion with your technical teams, like across your, your data science teams, your app developers and IT operations, um, and have a more in-depth technical discussion, move to, do more discovery, and also talk about uh, the technical capabilities of our solution uh, and see how uh, Red Hat can help you make AI ML real. And then um, we also have a lot of collateral and so on that's publicable, that's publicly available. If you go to openshift.com forward slash AI dash ML, if you go to opendatahub.io, so you'll get a lot of different good things out there, uh, customer testimonials, uh, links to talks from our customers, reference architectures, and also the integrations we have done with different ISPs. So all that information is available on our website. We also have a YouTube video channel where we start at the very basic concept on why OpenShift for AI ML, and then uh, talk about the portfolio as well as talks from various uh, partners that we have on the AI ML space. So our goal here is to help you um, to accelerate your AI ML projects and the delivery of the AI powered intelligent applications at a very fast pace. Uh, with that, uh, that's the end of our discussion today. Uh, if you have any other questions, so this would be a good time to open up and, um, and talk about your questions and see how we can help you make AI ML real for your uh, business. So thanks a lot and have a nice day. Take care, bye.